next we will go ahead and see what are the equilibrium equations that the stress field has to satisfy. Till now we have assumed that the stress is acting uniformly or there is no difference between the positive normal and negative normal phases of the stress cube. When the stress varies spatially there will be a difference between the stress acting on the positive normal and the negative normal and we want to see what happens then ok. Now we are moving on to look at two dimensional equilibrium equations ok. Now there are two kinds of forces that can act on a body one is what is called as a contact force that occurs due to contact just like if I apply a force here on the table it is my hand is in contact with the table and the ends I am applying a force that force is called as a contact force and second force is called as body force this does not occur due to contact this occurs through action at a distance kind of a concept wherein the earth attracting a body to fall on its surface is an example of a body force the gravitational force is an example of a body force so are electromagnetic forces these are action at a distance forces forces ok example of them are gravitational force electromagnetic force ok. Now let us take a two dimensional plane stress element ok let us take a two dimensional plane stress element let us assume the coordinate system is oriented at the center of this element let it be E x E y. Now you know that the components of the stress cube are there will be a sigma x x acting here if the stress were to be uniform there will be a sigma x x here too ok. But the cube has a dimension of delta x which is infinitesimal but significant ok. So, the hence the stress acting here would be sigma x x plus d sigma x x by d x into delta x let us assume that to be the stress there ok and then similarly let sigma y y act here then the stress acting here would be sigma y y plus dou sigma y y by dou y because there is a variation along the y direction here between the bottom phase and the top phase into delta y ok. Similarly I have uh, the shear stresses this will be sigma x y this will be sigma x y and it will be sigma x y plus dou sigma x y by dou x to delta x because here the variations along the x direction. Similarly I will have this is sigma y x this will be sigma y x plus dou sigma y x by dou y into delta y ok and this stress would be sigma y x ok. Apart from these stresses that are acting over the respective areas there is a body force let us assume that this body force is let us assume that there acts a body force B along at the CG of the element wherein B x would be the component of the body force along x direction B y would be the component of the force along the y direction ok. Now this body force is usually defined per unit mass usually defined per unit mass for understandable reasons because you are more interested in the gravitational force which depends upon the mass of the body ok. Hence this cube is travelling at a velocity of uh, 
v with an acceleration a okay with an acceleration a in the plane of the diagram okay in the plane of in in the same plane okay so now if i for this cube to be in equilibrium i require the sum of all the forces to be zero okay let's say i am interested first in sum of forces along the x direction okay then what i'll get is i'll get the forces that are acting in the x direction are sigma xx and sigma yx okay so i'll get sigma xx plus do sigma xx by do x into delta x minus sigma xx into the area over which the stress acts okay the area over which the stress acts is this area that will be delta y times into the plane which will be delta z let us assume that the cube is having a dimension delta z in the z direction okay so this will be delta y into delta z because i am assuming a cube like this where in this dimension is delta x this dimension is delta y and this dimension is delta z and my coordinate system is ex ey and ez outside the plane okay so this will be one of the component of the forces the other component of the force would be this sigma yx component of the force is so acting on this plane the top plane hence this area would be delta x times delta z hence this component will be delta x times delta z so that will give me plus that will give me plus sigma yx plus do sigma yx by do y into delta y minus sigma yx into delta x delta z plus there is a body force rho whose component along x direction would be denoted by rho bx into its mass okay so i'll write the mass as rho times delta x delta y delta z but this is the volume this is the density delta y delta z is the volume of the cube and hence this product will be the mass of the cube okay this should be equal to the inertial force that is applied on the body okay so the inertial force would be the mass times the component of acceleration along the x direction which i denoted by ax times the mass which by the same argument will be rho times delta x delta y delta z okay so simplifying this you will get that do sigma xx by do x plus do sigma yx by do y plus rho bx must be equal to rho ax but the volume of the cube i have cancelled throughout okay following a similar approach for the same cube i am going to write the equilibrium equations along the y direction to be equal to fy inertial force okay here the first that are going to contribute are sigma yy and sigma xy here okay so i'll get sigma yy plus do sigma yy by do y into delta y minus sigma yy into the area over which it acts which will be this delta x delta z because this is the area on which sigma yy acts okay so that will be delta x delta z okay plus the shear stress contribution which will be uh, sigma xy plus do sigma xy by do x into delta x minus sigma xy which acts on this way that will be delta y times delta z will be the area on which it acts so it will be delta y delta z plus the component of the body force along the y direction which will be body force into delta y delta x delta z which will be since body force is different per unit mass this is the mass of the body 
which gives me the net body force acting on this cube should be equal to the y component of the acceleration into its mass this rho times again delta x delta y delta z right. So, simplifying this further we will get the equation rho sigma x y by rho x plus rho sigma y y by rho y plus rho times b y will be equal to rho times a y. So, if this is the first equation this is the second equilibrium equation. You have in a plane problem you have two force equilibrium equations and one moment equilibrium equation. So, let us see what the moment equilibrium tells us ok. Next we are going to say what is the moment equilibrium m z moment equilibrium taking anti clockwise moment as positive ok. Now, I can take the moment equilibrium about any point, but I am going to take about the C g of the element ok. I am going to take the moment equilibrium about the C g of the element. The reason being if we take it about the C g of the element about this point the sigma x x, sigma y y, the body force and the inertial forces will won't contribute to the moment balance ok. So, only the shear stresses are going to contribute to the moment balance ok. Uh, so, what is that you get is you will have this sigma x y this sigma x y shear stress acts in the phase delta y delta z and acts at a distance of delta x y 2 delta x y 2 and it produces a moment which is uh, which is a anti clockwise moment. So, that moment is positive ok. So, we get sigma x y plus dou sigma x y by dou x into delta x into the liver arm which will be delta x by 2 plus sigma x y to liver arm which is delta x by 2 into the area over which this shear stress acts which will be delta y delta z ok. This anti clockwise moment has to be balanced by the clockwise moment produced by sigma y x produced by this stress this shear stress in here this produces a clockwise moment. So, that moment would be minus sigma y x plus dou sigma y x by dou y delta y into delta y by 2 plus sigma y x into delta y by 2 into the area in which it acts which is delta x delta z as to be equal to 0 ok. This equation would simplify to sigma x y minus sigma y x plus dou sigma x y by dou x into delta x by 2 minus dou sigma y x by dou y into delta y by 2 to be equal to 0 ok. In the limit and delta x and delta y tend to 0 you will get the restriction that sigma x y must be equal to sigma y x ok. So, this is what we are referring to as the stress tensor being symmetric due to the moment balance requirement ok. So, to recap in plane state of stress for plane stress we derived the equilibrium equations to get dou sigma x by dou x plus dou sigma y x by dou y plus rho b x equal to rho a x and then dou sigma x y by dou x plus dou sigma y y by dou y plus rho b y must be equal to rho a y then we got sigma x y equal to sigma y x ok. In three dimensions we will show that the same equilibrium equations for three dimensional stress state will be written as divergence of sigma plus rho b equal to rho a and the moment balance will tell us sigma equal to sigma transpose where this divergence of sigma is nothing but dou sigma x x by dou x plus dou sigma y x by dou y plus dou sigma z x by dou z 
dou sigma x y by dou x plus dou sigma y y by dou y plus dou sigma y z dou sigma z y by dou z sigma x z by dou x plus dou sigma y z by dou y plus dou sigma z z by dou z plus rho times b x b y b z equal to rho times a x a y a z. In the next class we will see a detailed derivation of this equation along with the condition that the moment equilibrium will tell us sigma x y equal to sigma y x, sigma x z equal to sigma z x and sigma y z is equal to sigma z y. Okay. We will see a detailed derivation of this, but before we conclude I want to just point out that the derivation here that we saw is not mathematically regress because it looked like there was no restriction on the stress field for us to get the equilibrium equations, but we are tacitly assumed when you wrote the stress field as given here as a first order Taylor series expansion when you wrote the stress field using a first order Taylor series expansion as this that the higher order derivatives are have a magnitude which is lesser than the first derivative. This is not always true. Okay. Let me give you an example. Let us look at a function form f of x f of r to be r power 3 by 2 in the domain 0 less than r less than 1. Okay. Now, d f by d r is 3 by 2 times r power half and d square f by d r square is 3 by 4 r power half. Clearly, the second order derivative and I R the derivatives have values more than the first order derivative. It does not mean that if the stress field were to vary like this is the inapplicable stress field to uh, write the equilibrium equations. Okay. And hence in the next class we will see a regress way of deriving these equilibrium equations without any assumption and show that it holds only when the stress field is continuously differentiable in the interior of the body that you can get the equilibrium equations as the derivation of sigma plus rho b equal to rho a. Okay. Thank you.